All right, so we're going to be starting a new series on text-to-speech using CAPTI. So CAPTI is basically just a better way of listening to speech on your computer. You may have noticed a few different problems that you've been running into on your Mac computer or your other computer while you're listening using the default programs. First, you may have noticed that you can't actually pause your computer's speech. You can either stop it and restart the speech, but you can't actually pause it and resume from where you were last listening to. CAPTI allows you to do that. CAPTI also has a really nice feature where it actually highlights the text as you're reading it. So you don't have to worry about where you left off, you remember it because you can actually see the text being highlighted. Third, CAPTI allows you to skip around, so you can use shortcuts to actually skip forward a sentence, back a sentence, forward a paragraph, back a paragraph. That's just very, very helpful, at least in my opinion. It's been very useful to me. Also, CAPTI finally is integrated with apps like Bookshare and Pocket and is cross-platform, so it works on your Windows computer, it'll work on computers that can run Chrome, it'll also work on your iOS. So it's just a very all-around useful program. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about the basic capabilities of CAPTI, and in later videos, we're going to talk about some of the more advanced programs features. Um, so most of the stuff we're going to talk about in this video is just in the free version, and it's very standard. Then we're going to be talking about how I use CAPTI to my own advantage, and finally in the next the video after that, hopefully we'll have time to talk about some of the premium features in CAPTI. Let's jump right in. Okay, to start, open up any web browser and just go to C-A-P-T-I. I like Google Chrome. So, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click this link right here, CAPTI Voice Narrator. And then you're gonna see a bunch of different options. Um, what we wanna do is click on the tab called Get CAPTI. Just for clarification, we don't take any legal responsibility for anything you do on your computer. Everything you do is your own choice. For our purposes, we're gonna get the PC version. Um, you can use an online version, but I want it on my actual Mac, so I don't want it to be online. And then I'm gonna click that tab, and then click Download CAPTI. So you'll see this little download thing, and we'll come back as soon as that download is over. All right, so now that the file is there, just click on the capti.dmg file at the bottom left corner of Chrome, or you can go to your downloads folder and just click on that there. So it will open it. Okay, and you're gonna see this little installer. Just click on install captivevoice.pkg. And just follow the got it set up hit continue. Continue, read the license, agree to it. Install, type in your password. Okay, so it's going to install. Okay, so now we have a few sign-in options. So basically it's going to pop up a window in Google Chrome. Um, you have a few options. You can create a Google account, a Facebook account, or you can just use your own email. I'm gonna use Google to sign in. So I'm gonna use my account, click on that, and it will automatically sign in, so you don't have to do anything. You'll just have to remember your Google password in the future. Okay, so now we have a bunch of different instructions. I'm gonna skip this because I already know how to do this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in the ways that I found most helpful. So first of all, um, I'm assuming you already have some voices that you like downloaded on your computer. All these voices that are pre-installed are already on your computer. As I mentioned earlier, if you haven't already watched my video, on how to use text to speech, go do that now because this next part won't make any sense. But basically, Ava is already installed on my computer, so I'm going to use Ava, and I've already installed like the high quality version of that. So I'm going to choose Ava as my preferred voice. And now we can actually set our preferred speed. So first of all, let's listen to what it sounds like now by hitting the play button. Hi, I am Ava. This is how my voice will sound when you ask me to read for you. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise it all the way up to 500 words per minute. Unfortunately, that's the maximum that it can go, but that's pretty good for most people. Here's one slight issue that I've been running into with CAPTI. For whatever reason, in order to get Eva to speak at a faster speech, you need to click like Alex or something and play him at 500. Hi, I am Alex. This is how my voice will... And then you can play Eva. Hi, I am Eva. This and it'll sound to to read 500 words per minute. Hi, I am Eva. I don't know why this is. I've talked to the developers. They haven't seemed to be able to find a solution, although I have found them very responsive. So if you do find that your voice isn't speaking at the rate you want it to, click Alex or some other low quality voice and then go back to Ava. Okay, 
So we're setting over as our preferred voice, and we're going to go back to our playlist. Here's uh, just a little sample that they let you read from. And so you can instantly see that it looks a lot different than when you normally are using text-to-speech. First of all, you can actually see, as if you play it, you can see it's being highlighted as it's read. So let's try playing it. Welcome to Kathy Voice. Kathy is the best education and productivity app for listening to ebooks, documents, and web pages. It is perfect for learning English. So as you can see, it's very, very good at tracking what we're reading. So that's very helpful because sometimes I'll be reading and then I just don't remember where I am. And all of a sudden, I'm stuck. And so I have to read through the entire passage again. In addition, you can also play and pause. So you don't have to uh, keep playing from the beginning of paragraphs. So when you're normally using text-to-speech, you have to select everything and hit your shortcut key. And if you pause it, it goes back to the beginning of your selection. With Capti, that doesn't happen. So I actually uh, had my microphone die while I was recording. And that means that I'm going to be recording on a slightly different microphone, so it's going to sound a little different, but it's still good quality. Anyway, we'll just keep going. There are a number of really useful shortcuts, which you can find by clicking on the question mark in the top right corner, which is also the help, and then clicking on shortcuts. You're going to want to take a look at all these at some point, but the ones that I care about the most are Q, which is the pause and play speech, and then S, which is skip forward a sentence, and shift S, which is skip back a sentence, and the same thing for P, which is skip forward a paragraph, and shift P, which is skip back to paragraph. So if you go to your thing and you're listening to it, if you hit Q, it plays it. Kathy is the best education in and if you pause it, it again does the same thing. S skips forward a sentence, P skips back a, par a forward a paragraph, shift S, and shift P skip forward. Uh, skip back paragraphs and sentences as well. So those are really useful. I've also created my own special shortcuts, which are global using Automator, and I'll show you that hopefully in a later video. Okay, so how do you actually add stuff to Capti now? There's a little button in the top left corner called Add a Track, or it looks like a plus in the track. Click on that, and so there's a few different options. You can upload, which means that you just upload a document like a Microsoft Word document in your file system. Or you can click it and add it from Google Drive, Dropbox, or Instapaper if you use any of those. You can also add, though, from Bookshare and Project Gutenberg, which are incredibly useful. So if you have a Bookshare account, um, you can log into your Bookshare account, which is And then you have the option to search for books in Bookshare and find books that you like. So let's say we want to listen to Pride and Prejudice. find it and there will be a lot of different ones I already actually have one so I'm going to go there and you can just see it so let's say I want to listen here and so you can have the entire book here which is quite useful anyway so that's how you can use that for that there's also a feature which we'll talk about later which is how you can add it using a bookmark and the add to captive button but we won't talk about that right now all right, so now we're going to turn over to how to use Capti on your phone. So to start off, we're going to go to the App Store. And we're going to type in Capti, C-A-P-T-I, as you can see in the top, and then click the app, download the app, Capti Voice. And we'll just give it a few seconds to download. OK, then click the Open button. So you can either sign in with an ID or password, or you can sign in with Connect with Google. I'm going to use that because that's how I signed in on my computer. All right, there you go. Okay, so it'll take a few seconds to load. And I'm just gonna skip all that. It's just instructions on how to use Capti. I'm gonna show you how to do it myself. So this first button, Welcome to Capti, will be just a little demo. Um, so we're going to hit play. And it'll say, you know, it'll play it and you can see it. Now that's playing really slowly, so I'm gonna go to the speech button and I'm going to change the speech rate to 500 words per minute and then go back and hit play. Okay, so now if we want to change the voice, uh, well, first of all, let me just explain what's going on here. So you can first of all see that it's highlighting the text as it's reading and you can skip forward and backward. Now, the way that it skips forward and backward is it does it as a percentage of time. So you can see the slider here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, I'm going to click that button and hit time. So it now skips forward and backwards 15 minutes based on these arrows. And then we're going to hit play, and so it should be playing. OK. But you can also change by paragraph, search, by books, whatever. Uh, anyway. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the text. And you can see that you can change the text to really small, or you can change the text to really big. Um, I'm going to leave it you know, back where it was probably before, just for the sake of me. 
that's about good. And uh, then what we can also do is we can change it to the color theme. We can change it to dark mode. Um, it doesn't make the entire thing dark. It just makes um, just this part dark. But we can make that dark. Um, if that's better for your eyes, I'm going to change it back to bluish because I like that better. And you can hit play again and it'll play. So that's pretty nice. Um, another thing is that if you want to skip to a specific section, you can select it and then click jump here, which is pretty nice. But what I'm going to talk about now is the voices. So the voice, it says, is Samantha. But if you know some, the voice of Samantha versus the voice of Aether, you'll know that Samantha is actually not the voice that's being played. Um, and if the sound is going through, the sound may not be going through, which is which is fine. Like, you don't need to know that. But what you need to do is you need to go to System Preferences, go to General, Accessibility, and then Speech. I don't know why it's so hard to get to there, but that is. Then you click Voices and English. Okay. Whatever English voice is selected and is female will play in Capti. So if, even though it says the voice is Samantha. So if you select Ava, which is a female American English voice, it will play for Samantha. If you select Samantha, that will also play. The only voice that it won't work on is Sam uh, Siri female because it's supposed to be a different voice apparently. It's a different system. So don't worry about that. It's a little bit complicated. But go back to this. And so we're going to use Ava, which is what I already have selected. So you can see Ava enhanced is selected. So that's what's going on right now. I just wanted to mention that because it's a little bit confusing because I do not like the voice of Samantha, but that was the voice that kept playing for me, and so I finally figured out how to get rid of that. Okay, so uh, a few other things that I want to mention to you. First of all, let's talk about how you add content to Capti. So the first thing that we need to notice is that if you go to your playlist, um, you can click the plus button. And you have a few different options. You can add things through browsers, through Bookshare and Project Gutenberg, which we talked about before, through Dropbox and Google Drive, OneDrive and iCloud, and Pocket, which I'll talk about, which is really a useful program, but for now I won't talk about that. And then there's the camera and photo library. Those are basically if you want to do an optical character recognition. I already talked about that in an earlier video. I won't cover that right now. If you want to look at that, click on the eye in the top right corner. I'll explain what that is. Basically, it's if you want to scan a physical book into Capti, you use those two features, but it's a premium feature, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be showing you that right now. I think I'll be able to show you the premium features later. I talked to Capti, and it seemed like they'd be willing to let me show you those, so that should be pretty helpful. And then we have copy text and new text. Uh, copy text is basically if you have something on the clipboard, we'll have that automatically there, and you can just add it straight to Capti. Um, what I'm going to talk about is actually a little bit different. There's a better way of doing that, so let's say you're in Google Chrome. And you hit, and you want this entire article to be sent to Capti, right? So you hit these three dots at the top right corner, and it'll depend on what browser you're in. And then hit the share button, and um, you won't have Capti automatically as an option. So scroll all the way to the right and hit more. Scroll all the way to the bottom and select Capti. Make sure it's green, okay? And then hit done. Now you'll have this option for Capti, so you'll click on that, okay? And it'll say added to Capti. So you go back to Capti, hit close, and it'll say it's in the loading queue. And we'll take a little break and wait for it to come up. Okay, so it's loaded. You can see it. So let's click on this article. And you can see all of the text in the article is here. And you can play and skip around however you feel is best. All right, so that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was really helpful for you. Capti is a really, really powerful program. So shoot me a comment. Let me know what programs you use and if you found Capti to be a better program or if you found a program that's more useful for you. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.